ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له جل عن الشبيه والمثيل والكفء والند والنظير واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وخيرته من خلقه وامينه على وحيه ارسله ربه رحمه للعالمين وحجه على العباد اجمعين فهذا الله تعالى به من الضلاله وبصر به من الجهاله وكثر به بعد القله واغنى به بعد العيله ولم به بعد الشتات وامن به بعد الخوف فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى اله الطيبين واصحابه الغر الميامين ما اتصرت عين بنظر ووعت اذن بخبر وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد ايها الاخوه الكرام اوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله في السر والعلن فان الله جل وعلا امرنا بالتقوى كما جاء في سوره ال عمران يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وفي بداية سورة النساء يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وفي نهاية سورة الأحزاب يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدى هدى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أعاذنا الله منها جميعا My dear brothers and sisters in Islam Allah رب العزة والجلال since the creation of Adam عليه الصلاة والسلام Mention only one thing, and that is to worship Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal alone. When Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal created Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and made him a Nabi, all the way to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Muhammad ibn Abdullah al Qurashi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, all of those prophets and messengers alayhi salatu wasalam, they had one thing in common, that is to worship Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. And not to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with partners. Meaning, while they are worshipping Allah, they did not think of anyone else or anything else to be partners with Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. And that is, as Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal said in Al-Quran Al-Kareem, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولَ أَنِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ And remember when Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, He is saying that when we sent in each nation, a messenger reminding them about worshipping Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. So, Ibadatullah means Wahdaniyatullah. Worshipping Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal means singling out Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. Wastanibu Taagut and avoiding the Taagut. And here, Taagut means anything and everything, anyone or everyone being worshipped. Beside Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal or even beside Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal means not even thinking about Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal rather worshipping those other than Allah. Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal when he commanded us to have the knowledge about him Jalla wa Ala when Allah commanded Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying that فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ No O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, have the knowledge that there is no one worthy of worship in truth except Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. By doing so, it will lead you to seek forgiveness of Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. By doing so, it will lead you to be deserved and worthy of the mercy of Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. By doing so, Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal, not only would he bless you, but also the progeny that you have, the next generation that you have, your wives, your children, your sons, your daughters, even to a degree your parents, provided that you worship Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal alone. If we ponder upon the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, when he approached Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasalam, and he was not known that he was Jibreel at that time, 
as he came and he, he had no athar, he had no trace of traveling. And he approached Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in his majlis. His knees were touching the knees of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to show how serious the matter is with regards to al-Islam, with regards to al-Iman, with regards to al-Ihsan. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was asked, what is Islam? Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned about Islam that to submit to Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal by singling him out, being obedient to Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal and freeing oneself from the shirk and its people. الاستسلام لله بالتوحيد والانقياد له بالطاعة والبراءة من الشرك وأهله. Then Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned about the five pillars of Islam. And vast majority of us Muslims are aware of the five pillars of Islam. And from those pillars of Islam is a salah after لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله. The first pillar is about declaring that no one is worthy of worship in truth except Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal and that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his worshipper and his messenger. Abduhu wa Rasuluh. So when we have the first pillar pretty much clear, then we must focus on the Salah. And the Salah, the best place to pray the Salah is in the Masjid. Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal mentions فِي بُيُوتٍ أَذِنَ اللَّهُ أَن تُرْفَعَ وَيُذْكَرَ فِيهَا اسْمُهُ يُسَبِّحُ لَهُ فِيهَا بِالْغُدُوِّ وَالْأَصَالِ In the houses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being mentioned when people are calling Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal as we see the mu'adhineen those who are calling people with the calling of the prayer Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, as the Muadhin gave the other just before the khutbah. So when we do not have these things in the houses of Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, then we are worse than what we are in now. Meaning that the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they are not doing their appropriate jobs, when we are there, the houses of Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal is being accommodated for us. Yet we do not take advantage of it. Then, Wallahi ladhi la ilaha ghayru. We will have nothing but loss in the dunya as well as in the akhirah. May Allah protect us all from such loss. Allahumma ameen. Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal mentions about the importance of masajid. In the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we see the importance of masajid. If we look at the time before the hijrah, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not have the advantage, yet he worshipped Allah rabbul izzati wal jalal in al-haram al-makki, the haram al-makki that we know now. He went through tortures. And because of us, he suffered. Because of his suffering, we are getting what we are getting in this very dunya. And that is that we are remembering Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. That is that we are claiming to be from the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yet, when it comes to the Masajid, we find the Masajid to be always busy when it comes to the weekly events, when it comes to the weekly days. And this is me not being rude, rather it is stating the reality to all of you, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the amount of people that come for the Jumu'at, imagine the same amount of people coming for Fajr. Amount of worries that we have in this very dunya, because the dunya is overpowering us. We are drowning in the oceans of the dunya, Allahul Musta'an. That there is something called Salah. Even when we focus on the word salah, it is about connecting with Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal, having the salah. If you want to disconnect yourself from Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal, be my guest. No problem. But as an individual, you must be responsible for your own self along with the flock that you're responsible for. Why? When you do not pray, when you do not come to the masjid, when you do not even care about how to do wudu, when you do not even have the knowledge, what will happen to your own children? They will die out. 
Islam will die out with your own progeny. The masajid, historically speaking, have been always the place where people found comfort. Masajid have always been the place where the knowledge has been spread. And the classic example that we see is from the Masjid of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And wherever the Sahaba Radiallahu Anhum Ajma'in went, they always focused on establishing the Masajid in which not only would people worship Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal alone, but also they learn Al-Quran, they learn Al-Hadith, Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they learn anything and everything connected to Al-Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The moment you are away from knowledge of these two sources that Allah Rabbul Izzat Wal Jalal has promised that he will preserve until the day of judgment, that is the moment you have signed your death warrant. And I am daring to say this, that you, would, you have signed for your death warrant. Why? Spiritually you are dead. Inside you are dead. Because Al-Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah mean nothing to you. When we claim ourselves to be Muslims, when we find excuses for being unable to attend the masajid for salawat, for being unable to attend the masajid for halaqat, for being unable to attend the masajid for durus, for the lessons, the masajid are for these things. And even more, in the masajid you would see people are learning how to read the Quran. People are learning how to do the wudu. People are learning how to pray in accordance to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And the people who are teaching are more blessed. Yet when these very people are being disregarded, then eventually you are disregarding the house of Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. Eventually you are disregarding the religion of Al-Islam. And the religion of Al-Islam, when you are disregarding it, let me tell you one thing. Islam will have no loss. You will be from the losing ends. You think that Islam would pull you backward? Islam would make you backward? You think that coming to the masjid will make you backward? Because you need to impress some people, those who do not care about your Islamic identity? Rather, Allah cares about your identity. Should it not be enough for you? to come to the houses of Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal, in which people are standing next to each other, feet to feet, shoulder to shoulder. Isn't that the true unity? Isn't that the true brotherhood that we are missing when we are not coming to the masajid, when we are depriving not only ourselves, but also our children? In terms of education, we are seeing how children are improving. That is because, impliedly, Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal wants the Muslims to thrive. But when it comes to disregarding the knowledge of Islam, by not coming to the masajid, by not even caring about La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, even not knowing how to make wudu, then of course, examples are plenty. When someone dies, the deceased person's son comes and asks about how to make wudu or doesn't even care, or to a degree shy to ask people how to teach them wudu. That is the reality of abandoning the masajid. There are cases where people are becoming atheists. There are cases where people are becoming Christians. There are cases where becoming, people are becoming this and that. Why? Because the masajid are being disregarded. Can I ask the phone to be silent? When the masajid are disregarded, my dear brothers and sisters, Wallahi ladhi la ilaha khayru, you have lost a dunya wal akhirah, khasir dunya wal akhirah. In this day and age, when the shabab are deprived from the masajid, you would see them to be doing things that would be really, really uh, shameful. 
in the Masajid, people learn manners. Even, for example, the manners of eating. If you don't bring the Shabab to the Masajid, you would see them to be eating with the left hand. If you don't bring the Shabab to the Masajid, you would see them to be using the toilet and not cleaning themselves with water. If you do not bring the Shabab to the Masajid, you would see them to be shameful of taking the word Allah Rabbul Izzat wa Jalla. Like they would be shameful to utter the name Allah. They would be even shameful to say that I'm Muslim. Many, many disadvantages can be mentioned. <coughs> Everyone has a story to tell from the Muslim families. Everyone has a story to share. Yet they do not share. Why? Because it is an embarrassment. You brought that embarrassment upon yourselves, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. The mere fact that you started avoiding the masajid. The more you are connected to the masajid, the more you are worshipping Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. From one salah to other salah, you are waiting. You are gaining the reward. You are connecting your heart to the masjid. By doing so, you will become one of those seven people about whom Rasulullah said, Seven types of people upon whom there would be shade where there will be no shade but his shade. One of those seven people. That he's a man whose heart is attached to the masjid. Another type of people from this very hadith you find is that Shabun Nasha fi ibadatillah. A young man who is being brought up in the worshipping of Allah Rabbul Izzat wal Jalal. And worshipping of Allah Rabbul Izzat wal Jalal in the masajid, awla wa afdal. They are more preferred and they are the best worshipping. So when the masajid are there, when we are not bringing the children to the masajid, when we ourselves are not coming to the masajid, then you are depriving yourself, you are depriving your progeny. As a result, nobody would carry your legacy after you die. They would not even know how to pray your own janazah. Wallahi, that is a shameful state that I am seeing. And I have seen Allahul Musta'an. Why? Because, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, the greeting amongst each other is not practiced. And that would have been from the masajid, if the, if the people were coming to the masajid. The response to the salam would have been taught if they were in the masajid. The manners of eating would have been taught in the masajid. The manners of talking to each other would have been taught in the masajid. People would have been away from all the humum, all the worries of the world when they're in the masajid. Yet, when it comes to the worries, no one, Allahul Musta'an, complains to Allah, but to people. If you have complained about your worries to Allah, Rabbul Izzat wal Jalal, by doing wudu and praying in the masjid, you would have had all the tranquility, all the comforts, the moment you do the sujood. That is why the masajid, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, about which Allah said in Surah Al-Jinn, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا The masajid are for Allah Rabbul Izzat wal Jalal, so do not call anyone Beside Allah Rabbul Izzat wal Jalal. You know that it is one and only creator. Allah Rabbul Izzat wal Jalal is the one that we are bowing down to. Is the one that we are prostrating to. Why are you depriving yourself from such blessings? Why are you depriving yourself from such honor? Many people are worshipping anything and everything other than Allah Rabbul Izzat wal Jalal. Should it not wake you up? To worship him alone. Should it not wake you up? To the reality that you are in. 
If your hearts are attached to the masajid, the moment that you are out of the masajid, Wallahi ladhi la ilaha ghayru, I swear by Allah Rabbul Izzat wal Jalal, you will have the discomfort. The moment that you are inside the masjid, I promise you, you will have all the comforts. That's why from the Salaf al-Salih radiallahu anhu majma'in, they used to spend much of their time in the masajid. So much so that if you look at the cities in the past, whether it is Al-Madina, whether it is Mecca, whether it is Baghdad, whether it even Egypt, for example, from the time of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu majma'in, from the time of Tabi'in and Atba'u Tabi'in, the cities, their centers were the masajid. Anything and everything was outside the masajid, surrounding the masajid. If you look at Mecca, if you look at Masjid al Nabawi, you would see that you have the ring roads around these, uh, these two blessed masjid. Rather than keeping it at the edge, people would come to the center. That was, and today is the case. Even if you look at Baghdad, for example, in the past when the Sahaba radiallahu anhu started residing, they built the masajid there. They made the masajid to be the source of knowledge. And people came to the masajid to learn. So the masajid, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the more you are spending time in the masajid, the masajid, every place that you are putting your footsteps toward, every place where your heads are going down, they would talk for you on the day of judgment, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. So take advantage of that. The more you are prostrating to Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal, especially in the masajid, the more you are removing yourself from the worries. The more you are remembering Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal in the masajid, the more mercy Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sends down upon you. The more you are seeking forgiveness from Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal, from your sins, whether they are known or unknown, Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal is forgiving your sins. The more you are walking to the masajid, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, when the whole world is sleeping, in the early morning for Fajr, for example, every khutwa, every step that you take to the masjid, the narration goes from the Sunnah of Rasulullah that your sins are being wiped off. Your guna, they are getting away from you. So have the habit of walking to the masajid when you can. The more you are remembering Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal while you are walking to the masjid, you are gaining double rewards. Reward for coming to the masjid. Reward for remembering Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. Remember the verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, مَثَلِ الَّذِينَ يَنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ then, of course, in, uh, in the other part of the Quran, Al-Karim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that man amila salihan min dhakarin aw untha wa huwa mu'min fala nuhiyannahu hayatan tayyiba wa la najziyannahum ajrahum bi ahsani ma kanu ya'malun Whosoever from the male or female does righteous deed wa huwa mu'min and he is a believer fala nuhiyannahu hayatan tayyiba we will give them the good life. So, when the masajid are for us to remind us to do the good actions. When the masajid, as soon as the masjid comes to my mind, or any of your minds, when you feel so joyous, remember that your hearts are attached to the masjid. When the mentioning of the masjid becomes something of a burden to you, remember that you are depriving yourselves from the mercy of Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. You are depriving yourselves from the forgiveness of Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. You are doubting yourselves to a degree. This is what happens when you disregard the masajid. Your iman becomes weak. And when the iman becomes weak, your Islam becomes questionable. When the Islam becomes questionable, well, ayyadu billah, you would end up leaving al-Islam. Because you have chosen misguidance by yourselves. When there are ample of opportunities to be upon the guidance of Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. To be on the path of Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. And you have chosen other way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
protect us all from the external and internal evil influences of shayateen from the mankind and the jinn kind. Allahumma ameen. Nafa'ani Allahu wa iyyakum bima fihi min al-ayatu wa dhikr al-hakim wa bihadi sayyid al-mursaleen. Aqulu ma tasma'una wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimin min kulli dhabmin fa astaghfiruhu wa tubu ilayh. Innahu huwa al-tawabu al-rahim. Innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. الحمد لله الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشأنه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الداعي إلى رضوانه صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا رب العالمين اللهم ارزقنا علما نافعا في الدين والدنيا والآخرة يا سميع الدعاء ما جرب السير سن الإسلام the masajid when the imams are doing the job in in order to teach you something reduce your egos quite often in this very part of the world we are seeing that imam or the imams imma, need to please the people that is not the case it is not parliament that whatever the votings that you do imam has to do whatever the result says every one of us here need to listen to the imam from the mihrab when they are saying something Every one of us is bound to listen to the Imam, provided that Imam is mentioning anything and everything from the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It is not your desires that Imam need to fulfill. Rather, Imam has a job. When Imam says Allahu Akbar, he becomes the guarantor for every one of you. Amount of responsibilities that Imams have on their shoulders, you need to know how dangerous that is. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving them courage. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessing them to take the lead. So when you are being led, be led. Don't take a position where you would start arguing with the a'imma, with the uh, uh, imams. You need to have manners when you're talking to the imams. You need to know the ways that imam can be approached. Quite often we have seen the masajid are being destroyed. And the Imams end up leaving. Why? Because of you guys. I'm just stating the fact, and there are many cases. I'm not being boastful about the facts that people are being deprived from the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala due to our own actions. I have to admit it. When people are not in the path of seeking knowledge of Al-Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah when there are people well capable of delivering the knowledge about Al-Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah about Allah, about Muhammad وسلم, yet they are being deprived. Why? Because we don't want the community to thrive. Whether it is the issue of Bengali, whether it is the issue of Urdu speaking people, whether it is the issue of Arabic speaking people, whether it is the issue of this or that. Allahul Musta'an, the moment you claim to be Muslims, you have a responsibility. You have a responsibility to learn about Al Islam. When the Mihrab is providing that knowledge, take it with open arms. When the Mihrab from which the A'imma and the Khutaba are delivering knowledge, take it gladly. Or else, kama antum yuwalla alaykum. The way you are, you will be led. Have that tendency, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, to learn. Have that humility. Reduce your ego, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Wallahi ladhi la ilaha ghayru. If you humble yourself, and this is a reminder for myself first and foremost, then for you, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will elevate your rankings. Man lillahi rafa'ah. Whosoever humbles himself for Allah rabbul izzati wal jalal, for the sake of Allah, Allah rabbul izzati wal jalal elevates his ranking. The ones who are knowledgeable about al-Islam, they are the ones they are afraid of Allah rabbul izzati wal jalal. The most ones that are afraid of Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal than many other people. As Allah mentions 
إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ From his servants, al ulama The ones who are scholars, the ones who are knowledgeable, the ones who guide people to al-Islam بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ zubur With the evidences from the Qur'an and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that would be the ultimate success that you can find in the masajid. You will never find it anywhere else. The more you are connected to the masajid with the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, individually and collectively, you would see the community to be prosperous. And I can guarantee that many people have been successful due to just one prayer in the masjid after a long time that they have not prayed. I know a brother, for example, for 15 years, he did not pray. Once he came to the masjid after 15 years, since then he has never missed any prayer. Why? Because he did not have the tarbiyah before that you know, they need to pray as Muslims. But as soon as they started praying and as soon as he took the masjid to be the most beloved place to him, then his own house, then not only did he prosper, prosper, but also his family is prospering. They are upon the path of memorization of the Quran, the children. Why? Because he made a promise with Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal that he will never miss a prayer. That is something you would learn from the Masajid, my dear brothers and sisters of Islam. That is something that I would leave this message with. We ask Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal to accept all our siyam and qiyam during the month of Ramadan. We ask Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal to forgive all our sins, known sins as well as unknown sins. We ask Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal to shower us with his mercy. Allahumma ameen. عباد الله اعلموا أن الله أمركم بالصلاة والسلام على نبيه وقال في محكم التنزيل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وعن أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من صلى علي صلاة واحدة صلى الله عليه عشر صلوات وحط عنه عشر خطيئات رواه الإمام أحمد في مسنده فصلوا وسلموا على سيد الأولين والآخرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وارض اللهم عن خلفائه الراشدين الأئمة المهديين الذين قضوا بالحق وبه كانوا يعدلون أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر الصحابة أجمعين وعنا معهم بعفوك ومنك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الكفر والكافرين وانصر عبادك المؤمنين المستضعفين في كل بلدان المسلمين يا رب العالمين اللهم كل المستضعفين عونا وظهيرا وهي لهم من لدنك وليا ونصيرا اللهم عليك باليهود المعتدين وسائر الكفرة الظالمين اللهم قذف الرعب في قلوبهم وأنزل بهم بأسك الذي لا يرد عن القوم المجرمين يا قوي يا عزيز ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين ربنا أتمم لنا نورنا وعف عنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وإنها عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون